Hi, I'm Jim W6LG for Ham Radio Basics. Welcome to my radio room here on Wolf Mountain Lookout. My favorite antenna for a lot of reasons is the dipole. It's simple, it works uh, in emergency situations. It can be strung up from as an inverted V, uh, an upside down V with the uh, uh, center insulator attached to a pole, a tree, a fence post, all kinds of things. Um, it, uh, it is real forgiving in terms of its length. Uh, it doesn't have to be perfect. There, pretty much anything will work uh, from uh, house wiring to uh, electric fence wire even. So, and that has, that makes some changes, but this is a dipole and I've mounted it to the top. <laughs> as funny as it looks, I've mounted it to the top of an antenna analyzer. Um, it's not pretty but it'll make the point of uh, what a dipole is. And in this case, uh, the, uh, instead of having something like this in the middle, I've just got a coax connector and I soldered on two lengths of uh, house wiring. How long is a dipole? Well, that's really easy. Um, the formula that I use is not one that you'll see in a book. It is simplified just a bit so that I can remember it and the formula my formula for a dipole is one, two, three, four. That I can remember. One side is 234. One, two, three, four. One side is 234 divided by the frequency in megahertz. So um, I cut this a little bit long. It is about 20 inches. So the, um, uh, if I take, um, two, three, four, and divide it by 1.75 feet. It's the number of feet into 234. Uh, resonant frequency, about 134 megahertz. So um, a little bit shy of two meters. Okay, so let's see where this uh, antenna is resonant. <clears throat> uh, it's got a couple of dips, so it's probably reacting with the other wires on the table. It... It's about 45 ohms at 137 point, yeah, 137.7 uh, megahertz. Uh, I said 133.7, so it's about four megahertz different. And part of that probably has to do with the insulation on the wire and its diameter. So let's see where it, it starts to go above two to one. It's above two to one at about 156 at the high end and about 132 or 33 at the low end. So about 20, 24 megahertz of coverage. On two meters, let's go to 144, it's one and a half, 148, it's about 1 1.6. So that's really pretty good. What happens if I add 100 feet of uh, coax? And in this case, I've got on the table 100 feet of RG8X. What will happen to the dipole? It's going to change the SWR. Okay. So, it, <laughs> it's so broad I was having trouble uh, figuring it out here for a second. So, its uh, resonant point is about 136 megahertz. 2 to 1 SWR now is down to 115 megahertz and up to... Well, it won't go that high. So probably 180, 190 megahertz. So we added 100 feet of coax. The uh, resonant frequency stayed pretty much the same, but its bandwidth became enormous. What does that tell us? Well, the feed line is really lossy, so the reflected power is decreased as it comes back into this box. In other words, the SWR here is one thing. The reading that this makes at the end of 100 feet of coax is very different. So we have a lot of line loss because this is RG8X. It's not good coax for, uh, for two meters and above. It's not good coax for a lot of frequencies. So it looks to be really... Um, uh, 
really lossy because all of a sudden it shows a huge bandwidth. So when you install an antenna and the SWR looks really good, that may be good and it may not. Uh, speaking of which, I want to show you this. Um, swing this around. This fancy looking box is my uh, automatic antenna tuner. Um, instantly tunes the uh, the antenna, which is uh, made up of two rods about, uh, I think they're about 19, well, they're probably close to uh, uh, 20 inches long. Um, feed point is down here, and it instantly matches to the transceiver. I mean, instantly. So let's um, let's see how this looks. Um, I'm gonna disconnect my uh, dipole, such as it is, which would work, by the way, and it worked fine on two meters. Oh, speaking of which, if this is a dipole, and if we get an understanding about how this works, oh, when it's configured like that. It's a vertical, right? So if we added more radials, it would look more like a vertical. Uh, bent and uh, not very pretty, but it would be a vertical. When it's like this, it's a dipole. If we can understand how this works as a dipole, we can probably figure out a lot of different antennas. So let me bring up a video uh, that I shot outside yesterday. It's far from perfect, but I took uh, exterior Christmas lights, holiday lights, whatever you'd like to call them, strung them out on about uh, eight feet of fiberglass pole and um, transmitted into it. And if, if you watch this video closely, look at the bulbs in the middle that are at the feed point, and then look at the bulbs on the end that are red. And as shaky as it is, the filaments for the bulbs in the middle, I think they were blue, um, hardly light up at all. The green are lit a little more, the orange considerably more, and the red are really bright. So what does that tell us about how the voltage divides on a dipole? The bulbs at the end are bright, the bulbs in the middle are barely lit. So the high voltage is on the end, and the high current is in the middle. Now, why is that important? Well, it's important because it tells us a couple of things. It tells us what part of the antenna is doing most of the radiating, and it's not the high voltage, it's the high current. So a good deal of the, of the power that's radiated uh, by this antenna occurs in roughly, roughly the middle, thir about third of the way up. In other words, you can take an antenna, uh, put some kind of capacity head on the end of it, uh, take off the, this end, and uh, either put a trap here or uh, some kind of capacitive loading, and still have a relatively efficient antenna for a dipole. Let's say you decide you need to feed this at the end. Okay, this is the low impedance, high current. This is the high voltage high impedance. So if we combine this and put the coax connector down here, what does the impedance look like? Well, if we do the formula, it comes out infinite, but in fact, it is about um, uh, somewhere in the neighborhood of 5,000 ohms, uh, 4,000 ohms in, in that ballpark. So we need to do transformation. In other words, we, if uh, we're hooking up RG8X here, that's 50 ohms, we need to change the impedance or match the impedance uh, with a transformer of some kind. Very easy to do, no big deal. It's uh, typically a nine to one or 10 to one transformation. Again, um, high current in the middle, high voltage on the end, high impedance, low impedance. If we feed it here, it's high impedance. If you can remember that, uh, you can pretty much figure out any antenna I, that's an exaggeration, but you can pretty much figure out a lot of antennas that we use on, on HF. Uh, this device, uh, which was um, similar to one marketed by a company, I think they were in Florida, um, uh, ran a lot of ads in some pretty well-known ham radio magazines, and uh, I made a copy of it. So let's 
So I've still got batteries going in that camera. Let's look at the SWR. Uh, again, this is an automatic matchbox. It'll, it'll, it will uh, immediately tune. Uh, there's some parts on the inside. If you put an ohmmeter on it, it appears to be open. Um, so let's just set it on the table here. Well, I'm at 175 megahertz and it's one to one or darn near it. Let's, uh, let's tune down. I'm at 143 megahertz and it's one to one. Isn't that amazing? It works great. Uh, I've got a great SWR on, uh, on all frequencies. There is a point to this. There's 128 megahertz. It's still one to one. Uh, let's go down to, um, uh, let's go down to 10 meters. It's still one to one. It instantly tuned. Uh, here's, um, 14 megahertz. It's one to one. And in fact, if I'm turning the knob and it's one to one everywhere, no matter what frequency I go to, it's one to one. So how does this magic box work? It, uh, automatically tunes. Uh, it says right on it that it's rated at hundred Watts. So you, um, you get a very good SWR. Um, the manufacturers of these kinds of antennas have done them as dipoles and as verticals. Um, if you hook this up and you listen with it, you'll hear a few signals. But what is this? How does this work? Well, if I take off the cover and you look inside, you're going to see about 50 resistors. Yeah, it's a dummy load. It's a dummy load and the resistors are connected to these two rods. Um, one through a grommet, the other one, the case is uh, connected directly to the rod. So it, it produces a one-to-one -one SWR on any frequency, I think. Well, it, it's going to get weird in, 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 when you get up to gigahertz, but on all HF frequencies up through VHF, uh, probably even 70 centi centimeters, it's going to be one-to-one. -one. So when you see your SWR being low, it may be because you've got huge coax feed line losses. It may be that your antenna is not very efficient. Um, so this is, these are things to be aware of. When a company advertises an antenna that tunes everywhere with a low SWR, be really suspicious. An efficient antenna tends to be fairly narrow in its performance. It has a high Q. Um, this thing is nothing more than a dummy load. And in fact, uh, I'm not sure <laughs> which would work better, my, my uh, light bulb dummy load or, or this thing. Um, what have we discussed uh, today and what's coming up in the next video? Well, we've, we've discussed the uh, high currents in the middle on a standard half-wave dipole. High voltage is on the end and because it's high voltage, it's high impedance. At the high current place, that's where most of the radiating is done. It's not on the ends. Um, thanks for watching. I, I hope you've enjoyed this. If you have a comment, please post it below. If you've enjoyed uh, this, uh, this episode, please do subscribe. I'm trying really hard to get to 10,000 and uh, subscribers, and I think I'm at uh, 8,100 plus. Uh, last couple of videos have had a, a lot of views. Anyway, thanks for watching. I'm Jim, W6LG for Ham Radio Basics 7.3. Thanks. Bye-bye.